Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Pal Nepal Manikam. In this video, we have a very, very special guest, my very, very close friend. His name is Rajesh Krishnamurthy and he lives in Seattle. And this is a series of how um, I'm, I've been trying to show you guys that, you know, this obesity problem, this belly fat problem is not unique to patients alone. It's actually mainly for doctors. You know, when I was obese five years ago, I never realized that I was obese and I have been preaching people that you should lose weight. So I thought that I was was uh, actually a hypocrite by not practicing what I preach. So for the last five years, I've changed. And this series of videos, I'm actually bringing in people who belong to my own um, uh, fraternity with the doctor circle to see they have gone through the same journey as well. So um, previously, there's an interview with Dr. Anusha. I will put that uh, in the link. And now we will invite Dr. Rajesh Krishnamurthy. Uh, I'm so happy to have him on the show. <music> Hello, Pal. Um, I'm going to give a start with a disclaimer that it's very difficult for me to talk with Pal in English. <laughs> I've known him for, um, I want to say, what, 2007? And I've uh, spoken him, uh, with him only exclusively in Camel. So I'm going to try my best. Uh, even in front of even in front of English people. <laughs> yes, we were, I, I will talk about stories where we got into trouble uh, for talking too much or too loud or in another different language. Uh, but uh, essentially, I promised him that I'll stick to English as much as possible. Uh, <laughs> I'm a gastroenterologist uh, in Seattle, uh, and I specialize in more like endoscopies uh, within the field of gastroenterology. Got it, got it. He's, yeah. he's a real gastroenterologist. I'm a YouTube gastroenterologist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, you know, similar to me, you also had the same obesity journey. So I will, this is the platform for you. So just describe your journey and I'll ask you more questions about your journey. I think I want to refute the fact that it's similar to you. I think mine is much worse than you <laughs> because when the first I met uh, uh, Pal um, back in um, 2009, he was not obese. Yes. I've seen him uh, a before and an after, but it's just that the after was obese. Before was uh, not so I was. Obese. I was like, Tulu the Ilamai Danush. Uh, I don't know about the Tulu the Ilamai, but about the Danush part, I agree. <laughs> but I don't know if I would agree with the Tulu the Ilamai part of yeah. it. Um, so first time I uh, met Pal was in Kaplan when we were both... Um, uh, trying to prepare uh, for the USMLA exam when this was a skinny dude who got uh, um, uh, got accepted into a prestigious Massachusetts uh, program. I was struggling to say that word in the past and still struggles to say that word. Uh, so he was um, a little ahead of us. He had some family here. He was moving here. But at that point, he was skinny. And then I saw him... Um, transform into Bhagubali <laughs> of the bad kind. And then I again saw him transform uh, uh, into the skinnier pal that uh, everybody knows now. Um, getting to um, my side of the story. Um, so I have uh, issues with stress eating. And I think that is very, very common uh, with uh, all uh, uh, people, a type A personalities and um, people... Uh, um, especially doctors and engineers, professional. And I see that in the clinic all the time. I'm not saying that just from my personal experience. Uh, so as part of uh, getting into the medical school where you're just sitting and studying for exams and anytime you get into more stress, I had the habit of eating a lot, um, more snack-wise. And I also, somebody proposed this idea of drinking Coke along with uh, snacks while you're studying for both because it gives you energy. I didn't know what energy meant at that time. It's just empty calories. But it did work in prepare, studying longer and not sleeping. It right. did serve all the purpose, but it I gained a lot of weight. So going into medical school, I would call myself, um, I didn't call myself obese back then, but now I can call, I can say. How much did you weigh at that time? So when I started medical school, I want to say it was about uh, 190 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, but then as the medical school, as everybody knows, it's um, an Indian system. Um, it's very stressful. hierarchical, very stressful. And stress mm -hmm. builds up as the years go by. Mm -hmm. So by the... So, by so the, food, food was your go-to stress buster? Correct. Whenever you're in excessive stress, then you go to food. Mm -hmm. When you're in excessive joy, you go to food. It's something like... I don't want to say that, but it's something similar to what you will hear from alcoholics. Yeah, no, so, no it's, it's true. Yes. 
and, and um, uh, at least the science has moved now that we are calling this binge eating and stress eating disorders. We have names for that. Just I just feel bad for people who existed uh, 20, 30 years ago. They didn't have a name for these mm -hmm. disorders. They just mm -hmm. had thought there was something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Now we have names and at least we can talk about it freely. Um, so getting back to the story, so by 2005, the final year comes where you're stressed whether you're going to clear the exam. And you could be the smartest of the kid uh, in your class, but you can still be failed by your professors for just X, Y, Z reasons. So the mm -hmm. stress is not necessarily because you have not prepared well. So as part of that, by the time I started our surgency, I was at my peak weight. I want to say 215 pounds. 215 um, 215 pounds I mm -hmm. weigh uh, so my height is 175 centimeters so I was clearly obese uh, but then our surgency suddenly there's no exams mm -hmm. all you need to do is just work but work is not the stressful for, for me it's mm -hmm. just exams on the the point of um, impressing your superiors that was more difficult for me uh, to clear the why was and all that so essentially suddenly i had this year where i didn't have to study take exams just work so i was able to focus on myself and uh, i was able to lose 50 pounds and all my and i wanted to look my best uh, for my graduation picture and i did manage to achieve that goal but uh, that's not the best part of the story the best part of the story is uh, or i should say the worst part of the story is that was my first innings Mm. The game was not over. I thought I have lost the weight and I'm going to remain like that. Uh, but then uh, fast forward, then I decided to do USMLE exams. For people who don't know, it involves three written exams and then an oral exam where you need to come in person to the States. So I had to study for exams again and the same... Uh, Stressful thing happened again. Stressful thing came back again. It's just like uh, the same ghost comes back to haunt you and then you're sitting again. And then studying again, eating your mixture and muruku and chakri mm -hmm. and your coke again. So you just go back into the same mode without realizing that we have been through this once. Mm -hmm. And then at this time, over the next two years of finishing those exams and getting visas and traveling, I regained all of the weight, not mm -hmm. just part of the weight. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I see uh, in patients who undergo bariatric procedures. They lose weight. They've gone through the surgery, but then they gain the weight all over again despite the surgery so uh, it's very similar to those situations so but again but this time i moved to the states um and then i'm weigh weighing my the maximum i weighed again I, this time around now i'm like 2000 um 2009 Nine. 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 that's mm. when we are in the same class uh, mm. uh pal is my uh, senior resident i'm my junior resident by one year <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't show up <laughs> <laughs> I wish Pal is very strict when he's at work. You know, I have to say that he acts like uh, he's fooling around uh, in the videos, but when it comes to work, he gets very serious. Uh, he was the most liked uh, resident by our uh, um, by our chiefs back then. So I, but this time again, uh, in residency, fortunately in the US, there is no exams. Um, you've taken the exams, you've got into the residency. Now it's just a matter of working, which was never a problem for me. So I was back. Uh, I had time to focus on myself again, and then I start working on losing weight again. It's a combination of aerobic exercises and more important than exercise was the diet part. And then here again, I lost 40 pounds in three months time in mm -hmm. my internship year in Detroit when we mm -hmm. shared time. And then another 20 pounds after the acute weight loss uh, over the another three months. So over a total of about six months, I lost 60 pounds from 210 I came down to 150. 150, right. So the, the the key factor is that, you know, kudos to you that you you never gained back um, yes. for the last like five years. Now it's uh, counting 13 years and 13 I've years. kept it off. And kept I off. believe that I've kept it off for good, but I don't want to just speak uh, speak it aloud because I, I know what it is. It, it, it can always come back, but I think 13 years is a long enough time that I want yeah. to. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think I don't think you're going to go back because I think the change in mindset happened. So the uh, I wanted to emphasize to my audience that in the first innings after the change happened, right? So during your house agency, um, you know, during our medical school, we never got trained on what is calories, what is nutrition, what is protein, carbs, nothing, right? You know, I learned it in the last five years. Um, so you think that what did what actually changed in the second innings that that did not came uh, have your weight come back 
Yes. So the second innings, obviously, uh, everybody learns from their mistakes and everybody should learn. Mm-hmm. I want to, I just shouldn't say everybody learns. Everybody should learn because mm-hmm. I know people who haven't learned from their mistakes. So this time around, after I put in all the effort, one of the things I consciously did was I got rid of all my old clothes and I really got clothes that fit me well. And I did mm-hmm. not get new clothes until I got to my goal weight. Mm. So I was walking around in kind of PJs mm. until I got to my uh, goal weight. And after I got to my goal weight, I made sure I just bought clothes that were really fitting. I was feeling good in that. And I also got rid of old clothes. So I wouldn't say that there has not been a time in the last 12 years where I've not I've gained a little bit of weight. I have gained sometimes up to 8, 9 or even maybe even 10 pounds in between. But when that happens, suddenly you're out of clothes. You're mm. crawling into your closet looking for clothes that fits you better and there is none. So and then suddenly you you have a reminder without consciously that you're you're uncomfortable in your clothes, your waist is tight, you're unbuttoning, wearing a belt, but then that keeps your focus then to come back to your goal weight. So I've been fluctuating, but within the 10 pound. And I think the key year was I got rid of all my old clothes and I had to fit in my clothes and still has been the case. So, you know, the when you fit in the clothes, right? So that was one of the motivating factors, right? You feel yeah. good. You feel yeah. good that you have this uh, uh, good looking, Rithik Roshan looking clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My wife would have serious problems if I say Rithik Roshan. Uh, but uh, something... What, so that's, a, that's one of the motivating factors. Right. So what did you do next in terms of your diet? How did you combine diet into all this? Or even in your first innings, did you know about diet or it, the weight loss just happened because you were not stress eating alone? So in the in the first innings, all I did was like, okay, I'm going to eat um, less than 1500 calories. And that's all I focused on. But I have to say that the first innings, I was still in India. And we are blessed in so many ways for people who are living in the United States that there is a, a calorie uh, count return behind every food. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's a major deal. And every single person should take advantage of that. At least back in 2009, I could not turn around anything that I could buy from the bakery um, or uh, any samosas that I could buy and turn it around and see what was the number of calories. I just had to give up samosas. There was not an option to eat samosa knowing how many calories I was eating. Mm. So at that point, I just ate as little as I could. But I did, uh, be, being a doctor, I had to, one knowledge that I had was to add more fiber. I know Pal just made a recent uh, video where he says fiber, fiber, fiber. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's true. So uh, I used to eat... Uh, um, uh, goya or gava and uh, papaya which i knew were two um not too high glycemic fruits but a very high in fiber that used to fill me up and i used to carry a gava to work in my white coat as an house surgeon and that is one thing i did but oh, good. then good that's second, a good tip so basically you're saying that if you eat gova which has high fiber that will fill up your stomach so that you don't have to eat anything else so that you will not feel hungry Correct. But the more key is not the goa. The more important part is to carry that in your white coat. Um, when you're hungry, you want something that's available um, right in your pocket. Yes. If yes, you wait, yes. if you feel hungry and then you have to go and find something 20 minutes later, your mind does very interesting things. By the 20 minutes, by the time you walk, you have thousand reasons to eat whatever you find. So I think that is the key because when I moved to the States for the second innings, there was no go in the States. So I had to go to Apple. So during every pal may or may not remember every morning uh, report, though it's called morning report used to happen at 11 o'clock and I would always have an Apple. Um, so it is not that Apple is um, really low glycemic, but it has fiber and it's much better than any other snack. And then that is one thing that I had and I was stuck in the morning report for an hour. So you don't want to come up with excuses. You eat your apple. And then by the 1230 happens, now you are not too hungry. And now I used to eat the same Subway sandwich. Mm. Um, during that, my weight loss, one thing that I did was I could eat the same thing mm-hmm. uh, and then like not without, without complaining. I just used to have a Subway sandwich, but it would taste like an Indian sandwich. Mm. In the sense that I just came up with my concoction of 
what are the things to add in the chicken breast that I used to have, mm. where I was not feeling like I was starving and eating something that I didn't like. Mm. I just came up with the concoction. I'll tell the guy through this and that to the point that I enjoyed it. Mm. So I used to eat the same thing for lunch, and then dinner used to be a piece of fish, and I found a bread that tasted like chapati, mm. but it was not. Uh, there was a lot of flax seeds again, fiber, fiber, fiber. <laughs> you know, we used to tease you around that. You know, like he he looks like a fruit market guy. He has apple on the right hand coat, and the and then mango on the left coat. <laughs> <laughs> but but fruits are one of the main thing that you could actually include so that um, at least in the initial phase right um so so two important points i learned is one is you know you need to have that fiber thing right uh, in your pocket so that when you're hungry before you are hungry you need to eat it so that you don't he- eat a lot more uh, when you don't have any choice the second one is you talked about the calorie Uh, thing so even in india we do have calorie count on the ba- uh, on the back of the any kind of ingredients I, but they just not trained to improve much more i'm not mm. sure if it was even um, as a policy existed back in uh, uh, 2005 6 during mm, my mm. i think things have improved uh, so but now if you want to if somebody wants to lose weight what will you how will you recommend them to look into the calories now so i think uh, I think that is the first point whatever you mentioned people still believe including my own family members and friends who are doctors all believe losing weight is exercising mm. the six packs are made in the kitchen and mm. not in the gym i just okay. want that to be like very clear mm-hmm. so you cannot eat whatever you feel like and then feel like you can exercise more and then burn it off there is no such thing so diet is the most important piece and then exercise is on on top of it and for the diet component what has worked for me is consistency of eating something similar it doesn't have to be the same thing something similar on a daily basis and one other thing i did was again this is i'm not the first one to say this but it works is make your portion size of the rice or the chapati smaller and then increase the size of the vegetables more So um, how did you do that tell tell us some tips So I do that to the point where my wife complains that she's tired of cooking for me uh but So you um, cook you cook as well I do cook but mm. uh, my wife uh, doesn't want to hear that <laughs> <laughs> so, But when you were, when when you were not married you uh, you yes. used to cook well Yes so the mm. uh, when I was not married the what worked for me is like a uh, again I was poor as a resident we were getting uh, paid barely for the mm. rent and the clothes so what what I could afford at that point was frozen tilapia right from the walmart I would just when I come back from work I would just throw them under the tap water it will be thawing and ready in 10 15 minutes and then there used to be a bread called flaxseed bread it would look like chapati but it's dry but um but when you i warm it up in the uh, pan i just add a little of spray oil that makes it much taste much better and then the one vegetable that was easy for me to cook as a resident and single was working long hours was cabbage mm. so i used to just cut cabbage and throw them uh, with a few mustards and an oil and uh, a dry chili the total cooking time including the cutting takes 15 minutes mm-hmm. uh, and not making it up mm-hmm. um so i would have an entire bowl of that Mm. and then the fish served as my protein i see and then the bread uh, the flax seed bread um served the part of the, i didn't feel like i was uh, um starving myself and so, so let, me, bread, let me stop you there so you know you have the balanced diet right so you have protein carbs and some kind of fats and you know that you know increasing the protein and all those things so you know we expect that we are doctors we should know this but i did not know this what made that change in you and how did you learn this So uh th- th- I'm very uh, glad that you brought that point you mm-hmm. would think or one would think that uh, medicine curriculum as part of medical school would include nutrition and yes. diet mm-hmm. no it does That's not true. and mm-hmm. the sad part is even gastroenterology fellowship yeah. <laughs> yes and uh, does not include a, a, a like a separate didactic portion uh, on nutrition and dietics so it's just that after moving to the states i had just access to more information 
um, that I was able to self-educate myself, nothing to do with the fact that I was a doctor. Mm. Maybe I understood topics a little bit better, mm. uh, but just I had to reach out and learn. And currently, there is so many health coaches, uh, including like something that Pal is doing that was able to um, distribute this information. When mm. I did it, I, I had to kind of decipher it myself. So I seeked out to learn about these things and I just figured out that, okay, I need one Again, at, even at this point, we are talking about just macronutrients, getting the big portion, right? Like the protein in, um, and even at that point, I was not shooting for some forty pro forty grams of protein or fifty grams of. I just wanted to have a protein, a protein exactly for every mm -hmm. meal. Mm -hmm. I, that is what should be the goal for beginners. Oh, good, good. That's a good point. A protein for every meal, mm -hmm. and you know there are so many YouTube channels that say so. You know this is what a good rich protein is, and you can do some research right now, and you can make use of social media that is available in a good way as well. So once you figured out the calories, so you did that. And then you know that protein has increased. Um, and then, you know, it, even though the stress is not that much, you know, residency is a stressful job. You know, you we, we do like overnight call for like 30 hours. And we also are in the second phase of applying for a fellowship. And the stress comes back again. You know, that life cannot be without any stress. How do you manage that? Um, talking about that, the fellowship and the stress, that's when I, I saw firsthand pal becoming the bagubali yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> no i still remember so yeah. you know i was so confused about which fellowship to choose and then me and him will go to uh, uh aditi restaurant which is the name yes. of aditi restaurant and then eat biryani and he will eat water he'll drink water and i will keep on eating biryani and that was one of the main thing oh okay so Aditi Biryani, um, that gives me kind of nostalgia uh, back in the days because I live in Seattle. But unfortunately, though, there are millions of Indians here. The Indian food that um, I have not found South Indian food great and I have not tasted anything like Aditi Biryani uh, in Seattle. Yes. Yeah, so at that point, uh, when Pal was going through that Bhagupali transition because of the stress, um, I had already lost that weight and I was in the maintenance phase. And because I was one year behind him, I was not dealing with the same stress of application like Pal did. So I was able to drink water. Had I been in the same Pal's year, it's possible that uh, I would have been eating the biryani with him. Uh, so, but uh, to, getting back to the answering the question, how did I man the residency it's, itself uh -huh. was stressful. So for me, uh, it was not just the stress of exam, but the 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 fact that you're inactive sitting in the chair and reading in the library all day. So when you're inactive, there's something about being inactive. Um, stress plus inactive, I found was much worse than stress plus active. Fortunately, in residency, you are stressed, but you're still moving and mm -hmm. dealing with patients, walking up and down the floor. Um, and so I, I did not find that stressful. The, the combination of stress and inactiveness did not happen. I think that was one of the reasons that um, I did not go to my really old habits. Every year and there I have, but not to the point of gaining back the 50 pounds or anything, getting anywhere close to that. And, and now you keep a track of the calorie of everything that you eat. Not keep track, at least conscious of what, a, you know, what is a high rich calorie and then low calorie diet. And if you are eating high calorie diet, you compensate somehow later on. Is that right? Yes. Um, I must shamefully admit that every single meal is still a struggle, especially mm. if the food is good. Mm. It is a struggle to stop. It's not like I've uh, given that I've been 13, 12, 13 years out. Mm. Now it's like my body is like muscle memory. It stops mm. eating and all that. I'll be lying if I said that. Mm. And it might not happen for a lot of people. If there is really good food in front of me, it takes a lot of effort even now mm. to say that, okay, I'm stopping here. Mm. And, this is, and sometimes I don't stop. And I do give in and eat. But now my brain just does the math and knows that, okay, I've eaten 4,000 oh. calories. And I'm not just throwing 4,000. Mm. I'm capable of eating 4,000 calories in one meal. Mm. And now and then I still do it. But then... Because I know I've eaten 4,000, um, I just compensate for it later. Some of that with guilt, some of that very consciously. But regardless, I compensate for that. I might throw in an extra day of uh, my elliptical workout 
uh, the next day. Um, if uh, you're pos if it's possible to stop and not eat the four thousand, great. But it's still okay as long as you yes. know and eat the yes. four thousand. Yes. It is, uh, um, it is sinful to eat. Four thousand without knowing that you ate four thousand. Yes, exactly. Just the conscious awareness, and that came through repeated, you Correct. know, your behavioral changes and repeated reinforcement. Correct, and uh, mm -hmm. this happened over years. Where, so initially, I had to look up the big end of uh, every pack or do go mm -hmm. online to see mm -hmm. my fitness pal and all those kind of things. But over time, you accumulate knowledge. But mm -hmm. now, if you put a tray of uh, food in front of me. Within two minutes, I can tell a decent estimate of what calories that could be. And, um, and one thing I really learned from you was, you know, they always say that you learn, you are the people, you are, you are the sum of five people, five people who are surrounding you, right? So you are one of the main person I'm surrounding with all the time. So one thing I really learned is from you is you said that the food should deserve you. You will not touch something if that is not that tasty. You, you know that it is bad, okay? I mean, you know that it is rich in calorie, but if it is really tasty, you just will not control. You will just go um, without any limits uh, reasonably. And then, but if the other thing, if it is still bad, but if it is not as tasty, then you will hold up yourself and then you will focus your attention to only the food that you like. Correct. Uh, to, uh, for, to add to that um, policy that I had, like even during my weight loss phase or the weight maintenance phase while I was in Detroit, um, I will look forward to that one day Sunday yes. where <laughs> I and my intern or pal would drive to a restaurant. Uh, there were plenty of restaurants around where we lived, right. but we drove 23 miles right. uh, to a place right. um, be, where they had a lunch buffet. But even before I go there, I know all I'm going to eat is just Italy right. and uh, which is uh, kind of steamed rice cakes right. um, for the people who do not know Tamil, <laughs> <laughs> along with uh, lamb or mutton curry. So I will go to the buffet table yes. and all I eat is four or five Italy's and then just mutton curry because that reminds me of Diwali back home. Mm. And I won't eat anything else. I just mm -hmm. tell myself and that gave me so much satisfaction. I was still full. I know I have overeaten a little bit and it's probably around 2000 calories, but that was a gratifying meal. Mm. I look forward to that before and then I won't have guilt because I know that driving in, I'm going to be eating 2000, but then I will, I'll be so full. I won't eat lunch. So I saved a 500 calorie there. I will throw an extra workout on the Monday. So burned another 500. So necessarily I'll be left with thousand extra calories uh, that, that that's okay. Uh, mm. But that kept me going, and that was part of my fun social life. Uh, no, at least no. I was not eating a pack of biryani for no reason. No, absolutely. <laughs> you know, weight loss journey is like individualized for every each and every person, right? And then, you know, the only thing that really sustainable is your mindset change, and it has to be long term. As in your case, things will come back again if you just go for a crash diet course or something like that. So if you want to give like summarize one or two points for my audience regarding, hey, you know, when they are beginning, what should they do? What will you recommend? So the first thing is to, uh, first thing is don't feel bad that um, you are obese. Mm. Uh, um, in fact, before that, I, I see some of my family friends or even family um, members, um, they say that they are very happy the way they look um, in the sense they are, they know they're obese, they admit that, but then they say that I'm very happy the way I am. I'm, that, if that is a true statement, great. Mm -hmm. But the same people then try to get clothes that make them look slim, which mm -hmm. I have done myself. I'm mm -hmm. getting clothes that is a little looser so that I don't look big. If you're truly happy the way you're looking, that is really great and I mean it, but then you shouldn't be looking for clothes that make you look any different because then you're contradicting yourself. Mm -hmm. First thing is to realize whether you're obese or not, or if you are looking the way you want to look or not, and just be very honest about mm -hmm. it. And second part is, this is a long-term journey. This is mm -hmm. a marathon, mm -hmm. not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing that is easy about this. Mm -hmm. We can make it less painful as possible. Mm -hmm. but there is, there is no easy way. 
Mm-hmm. But then there is joy in mm-hmm. the process as you start seeing results. Yes. The most satisfying thing is you see a pound of weight loss that motivates you to lose the next pound of weight. So right. when you start, start really committed and as you know, with full force, then the initial loss will motivate you to lose more. And then don't feel if you gain a little bit of weight because of some personal event, don't feel that you are not good. Don't start blaming. It happens to everyone. It's I'm struggling after 13 years. So it will happen. Just be cognizant that we're all humans. It's happening. And just it's time to uh, pull up your socks and tighten your diet again. And don't have any shame in seeking for help. Mm-hmm. If that help means talking to people like Pal, that's the least you can do. Mm-hmm. If that helps meaning getting a bariatric procedure or uh, we have endoscopic ways of getting the same results of bariatric procedures, there is no shame. Do it. And then one um, other tip is when you're in the weight loss journey, just tell your friends and family. Don't keep it as like a, a closet thing where you're doing it in secret. Right, right. Like your friends, are, some friends are going to make fun of you. Mm. Some friends are going to say that, hey, what the hell, this is my party. How can you not eat? Yeah. You can save mm. your uh, diet for another day. Today mm. is Mongol, tomorrow is Diwali. Just tell them that you are doing it. And if they say that, brush them aside two times. And the third time, they wouldn't bother telling you. I'm yeah. telling you from my personal experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People have offered me or say, um, say that like, this is not okay for you to not eat today. Including me. Correct. <laughs> but, you. Uh, but then after you do, the, ignore them twice or thrice, then they will stop doing it to you. Don't be afraid that they're not going to be your friends or family anymore because you have said no to them. If they are really your friends and family, they they'll actually support you. No matter what. Right. So mm-hmm. make it public uh, that you're doing something. There is no shame in this and you're doing it for yourself. And one other thing is find your why. The mm. why for each of you guys is going to be different. Um, if you are a middle age, which is usually the crowd um, that is obese, unlike us, we were. I was obese even before I got to the middle age. Then one of the biggest why's that I can think of as a father of three kids now is your kids. Um, you've decided consciously to have kids. You have to be around, like Pal says, at least until they are adults. Mm. And, uh, it's not a given. It's not granted that all of you guys will live up to um, the point where they will mm-hmm. regardless of what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's other things like madras is an emotion, which I still agree it's correct, but biryani doesn't have to be an emotion. Okay? <laughs> biryani... Uh, uh, I do crave for biryanis. I eat biryani. My wife makes one of the best biryanis that in Seattle, not in the world. My mom makes better. <laughs> that said, mm-hmm. uh, uh, keep those uh, statements like biryani is my emotion that at any cost I have to eat that. Those things aside, um, it's okay to have biryani, but just pick your frequency uh, once a week, once a month, something like that. And again, um, in the concept of biryani, I want to mention something. The way I used to eat biryani before has changed from the way I eat biryani now. Mm-hmm. Now when I eat biryani, um, excuse me, vegetarians, I still I eat more chicken than the than rice. rice. Mm-hmm. Right. That is a big change. So my family uh, struggles with the amount of vegetables that I eat. And also, when I, if and when I eat biryani, the amount of meat I eat and how little rice because they you are don't leave any chicken piece for other people. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think we can afford to get more chicken. But it will take time, even for your own family, your own spouses, to understand what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And if need be, like I know my wife has found a, a cook who just comes in uh, once a week because I just eat so much vegetables. Mm. And a dedicated person comes and make four big, big portions of vegetables so that she can do her usual cooking and I tap into that reserve. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes some effort, but totally worth it. And you could just modify your surroundings. You know, if you cannot do that, you can at least spend more time to cook vegetables because vegetables and fruits are going to decrease that uh, um, calorie content and increase the fiber content. Correct. I, and uh, you, you can always come up with excuses on how cutting vegetables is difficult and all mm. that. But you pick your vegetables. For me, a lifesaver was uh, cabbage. And now that I can afford an air fryer, now it's Brussels sprouts. Like mm. I, You just have to split the Brussels sprouts and throw it, literally throw it into your air fryer. Mm. And in eight minutes, 
it's ready. There is mm. nothing. You don't even have to stand next to it. Mm. Uh, it beeps, and then you go back to eat it. Um, the other things that I've recently found extremely useful is uh, tofu, which is like uh, it's uh, anybody who knows how to make tomato chutney um, can throw tofu into it and eat. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, I don't even feel like I am on a, a bad diet or uh, rest- starving myself when I eat tofu in tomato chutney. It tastes really good. Right. <laughs> Super, super. Sounds those are beautiful tips. Those are beautiful tips. The main reason I brought you on this channel is that you know I want to tell the audience that you guys are not alone. Even doctors, us, we are dealing with the same problem as well. And the main thing is, doctors who are watching this show, I think we have to change as a profession that you know we need to lead as an example. And you know we cannot ask the patients to practice uh, pre uh, what, what we are not what we are preaching if we are not practicing ourselves. Um, so I think that is the message that I'm trying to convey. Um, anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, you were about to say something? Yes, I wanted to say that like even as um, when we are residents or uh, our surgeons in India, every time we are on call, many a times we order in food. And so it's all doctors and nurses eating. And what is the food that we order? It's always garlic breadsticks, right. pizza, pizza with the garlic sauce on the side. Right. And then there is Coke. And so, um, so the doctors, it's not like it's a privilege of being a doctor. So suddenly you have access to information and so it's easy to lose weight. So doctors are humans and when humans under stress, a lot of them behave the same way. So doctors also need to make a conscious effort to eat LB. Yes. Uh, so don't brush aside that these are two doctors who have managed to lose weight. So they're just preaching. It's as difficult to us as it's difficult to you. And we are not just doctors. We are gastroenterologists who are supposed to understand <laughs> nutrition uh, part of it. Eat nutrition, how to absorb and all that. But right. we still struggle when it comes to us. Right. So it's a struggle, but there is, it's, it's, the journey is worth it. Perfect. Sounds good. Super. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I know you are, uh, you are uh, running out of time for your next procedure. Um, good luck with your procedure on a patient. <laughs> all right. Really <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming on the channel. I'll bring you back again. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having Thank me. Bye-bye.